<laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone to School for a Course in Miracles. This is Bruce Rawls and thanks as always to Tim and Lynn for putting the school together and making it available to all of us for sharing what works with the course. And uh, it was a joy to be here. Um, so tonight, the uh, lesson du jour, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not not the calendar lesson, which we're going to start with. Yeah. But the lesson du jour is lesson 188. The peace of God is shining in me now. Does that, uh, does that come with ice cream or a la mode? Or... Oh, geez. I got some of that in the refrigerator. <laughs> maybe sprinkles. It's going so. in the freezer. <laughs> Luminous sprinkles, There's maybe. Stephen with his cor correction again. Not the refrigerator. The freezer. Oh, God. <laughs> we are a well-balanced group. Already. So what, why don't we start off with the meditation, <laughs> which we can use the, today's lesson for, which is lesson 268. And uh, I'll go ahead and read that. Uh, does anyone have the page number? I, I'm not turned to it at the moment. 429. 429. Thank you, Tim. Lesson 268. Let all things be exactly as they are on page 429. So if you want to just sit back and close your eyes and relax, and we'll just let this soak in. Let me not be your critic, Lord, today and judge against you. Let me not attempt to interfere with your creation and distort it into sickly forms. Let me be willing to withdraw my wishes from its unity and thus to let it be as you created it. For thus will I be able, too, to recognize myself as you created me. In love was I created, and in love will I remain forever. What can frighten me when I let all things be exactly as they are? Let not our sight be blasphemous today, nor let our ears attend to lying tongues. Only reality is free of pain. Only reality is free of loss. Only reality is wholly safe. And it is only this we seek today. I'll call us back in a few moments. Okay, let's bring that tranquility back to the the group. Thanks. So we were talking about cussing before the recording, and I was thinking we're blasphemous. <laughs> and it's like, well, the only, the only thing we can really blaspheme is is the truth, and and but it uh, rolls right off truth because there's nothing nothing to uh, divide perfect oneness with. Even though we think we pulled it off, we think we pulled off this impossible crime. So the, the only lying tongue, if there was such a thing, which is an important part of that impossible crime, is is the 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 words that say that that separation happened, right? Which is pretty silly, even though we're we're <laughs> we've all got PhDs in silliness, but we can transfer that that PhD expertise to to. Uh, sharing innocence let's practice any, yeah, any co comments on that Go yeah ahead. it's quite a quite a sentence um blasphemous and then lying tongues mm -hmm. <laughs> but i mean sounds like cecil beat a mill or something right yeah right it's big <laughs> it's charlton heston walks on and breaks the tablet so really <laughs> it, but i mean is you're right it's it's all made up however if we think we got away with it what, you know, like my image of blasphemy is, you know, the, the golden calf. 
we deny God is our God, and then we go running off and we substitute it for other gods. And then the ground opens up and swallows us. <laughs> but blasphemy in the Course is really just, we're, we're denying not just God, we're denying our, our, our sonship that we're sons of God. And that's, you know, I mean, I mean, and thinking we got away with that, that's a standard definition of blasphemy. We've denied our own identity. And then on top of that, we think we're bodies, which adds to the blasphemy. I'm not God's son anymore. I'm a body. And then anything that comes out of my mouth has to be a lying tongue. I mean, bodies are a lie that lie. <laughs> Everything that I take seriously coming out of my mouth is a lie. <laughs> it's just a lie. So it sounds like rough language, but I mean, he's just pointing out what he points out all 1300 pages. Mm -hmm. As you're saying that, I was thinking the old cliche of how do you tell when a politician is lying when their lips are moving, you know, but but every ego is politician, right? It's, it's all basically um, a propaganda machine for for the substitution, the, the separation, specialness, all those all those expansions of the SIN idea. Yeah. Anyone else on that? No? Okay, well, let's dive right into lesson 188 the you know, i know bessie it. said she cussed earlier today but i wonder if she blasphemed at all <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> i wouldn't go that far <laughs> but the, the ego is such a masochistic thought system it it says this is a blast for me i'm i'm having fun with being miserable <laughs> Me meanwhile <laughs> Lesson 188. Okay. The peace of God is shining in me now. Anyone want to read the first paragraph? I'm going to go across the screen. Chris, you want to read paragraph numero uno? Yes. Thank you. All right. Lesson 188. The peace of God is shining in me now. Or is it shining in me how? I can't tell with my book if that's an N or an H. Shining in me how? <laughs> more how more like that be? how? Shining in me how? I, I wasn't know, aware like, of that until... That, the, that's kind of a special, just now. special shining, you know. <laughs> how it is shining in me now. Why wait for heaven? Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. Light is not of the world, yet you who bear the light in you are alien here as well. The light came with you from your native home and stayed with you because it is your own. It is the only thing you bring with you from him who is your source. It shines in you because it lights your home and leads you back to where it came from and you are at home. Yeah, I love the that uh, telling it like this is the Howard Gosell telling it like it is here. As I'm almost going to say uh, uh, a good uh, uh, imagining of how it is, but that's not imagining. That's He's saying this is this is the truth right here. Um, and we do bring the light with us. Enlightenment is, um, light is not of the world, yet you who bear the light in you are alien here as well, meaning I'm just as alien as this light, and I'm part of that light. So, uh, you know, I think uh, it kind of comes back a lot to like Tim was saying earlier, where everything we say is a lie or it's this ego thing is just a silly little dream. And uh, that's not even derogatory, really. If we're not here, the whole thing must be a lie. But my my body, the world, the universe. Um, yet we just look at it and not uh, condemn it or be judgmental about it or anything else. Uh, we are the light. We are. I. Uh, 
listening to Kim recently, and and he just kind of came up. You know, of course, miracles is uh, pure non-duality. There's other things that you know you kind of feel like, oh, God is in the light, or God is in the lamp, or the trees, or uh, and he's like, no, God's not here at all. That that's um, I forget the term he uses for uh, when people kind of talk about non-duality yet they're bringing into the world or into their life you know Pantheism, god is, in is that me. what it is it, oh is well that, that could be that could, could be but but he was really just talking about it being uh half and half sort of that mm -hmm. that the course really is we're not here at all so anything we say as a body is a is a lie it's not uh um it's not who we are okay i'm good thank you Thank you. As you're saying that, saying that we're not here at all, I was thinking as separate selves, yeah, none of us are really here. But as, as one being, that's the only thing that's here. <laughs> but because we've gone far enough down the rabbit hole, we don't usually relate to that. It seems like the now that the Course is asking us to do is to, to forgive the specifics that we think we are and the things that you know, all, all the things that we projected at, with Holy Spirit's help, kind of bring that back to our mind and say, oh, I, I haven't shattered that. I haven't shattered this or that or that, or that. And there, I'm seeing myself or the reflection of myself. And, you know, that's, you know, that's the recognition. That's like, wow, there's, there's not really any change, but the, the 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 holy spirit's royal we i guess you, you can say that is is what undoes the the, the little separate cells right you know. i i did underline a few things in in uh, ken's journey through the workbook uh, um that i thought were particularly helpful in that first paragraph he says jesus does not want us to try hard because struggling against the ego gives it a reality it lacks. Recognition of the light is not a change for there's nothing to change from. So it's not, it's not like we have to expend a lot of effort. Um, in truth, we just have to see how much effort we're making to not experience ourselves as the light <laughs> to, to make ourselves miserable. You know, it's like that, that takes, that's a lot of work. But, you know, we've been expending for a humongous amount of time. Anyone else on that first paragraph? Well, going back to what Chris was saying before and making it a question, the peace of God is shining in me. How? What? <laughs> <laughs> Where? I mean, and then sentence two, it really, you know, it, it answers, yeah, it's already shining, but I can't see it. I don't know why I'm covered. I, I can't see anything. I just see specifics and they're doing terrible things to each other. <laughs> that's the, that's the why not. I'm not feeling the peace of God shining in me now. It's just, I'm covering my eyes. Really? That's all it is. Yeah. Well, take your hands down and <laughs> take down the judgments, take down the specifics. Yeah. Yeah. Just being willing to look at them. Huh? Hmm. Tim, would you like to read the second paragraph? Sure. Uh, this light cannot be lost. Really? Where'd it go? <laughs> Why wait to find it in the future or believe it has been lost already in the past or was never there at all? It can so easily be looked upon that arguments which prove it's, that the light is not there become ridiculous. All right. <laughs> Really? Who can deny the presence of what he beholds in him? Who can deny the presence of what he beholds in him? It is not difficult to look within, for there all vision starts. Anyway, there is no sight, be it of dreams or from a truer source, that is not but the shadow of the seen through inward vision. So everything starts in the mind, either from the wrong mind or from the right mind. So if it's ego-based, we're dreaming and we don't know it. And if it's coming from a truer source, then, you know, we're aware of the light. We might not see it, but we certainly experience it. And then there in the mind, there 
perception starts and there in the mind perception ends it has no source but this perception perception has no source but this perception started in in a seemingly split mind one part observing something else yeah as you're saying that i was just realizing you know, that if ideas need, don't leave their source and the ego's source is made up then the world is necessarily made up and so we think we have to deal with all the stuff in the world and yet we can choose at any moment the thought system of peace by just <laughs> with with holy spirit's help seeing that you know nothing happened and that that's been waiting for us all along i was also thinking about ken's uh uh, program called Forgiveness Now, where he says, you know, right now, uh, and I'll use the current time at five seventeen or seventeen minutes after the hour, depending what time zone you're in, <laughs> we can choose peace. You know, at, at seventeen minutes past the hour and twenty eight seconds, we can we can choose against grievances and say, well, maybe I don't need to punish myself anymore. Oh, all those kind of thoughts, right? And then, you know, that's denying the presence that we know is there on some level. Let's see. Let's just look at We've got a whole bunch of stuff in the line, I guess, but I'll try to try to limit it to just, just a few things. Um, in paragraph two, he comments says, the light is in our minds, yet we have wandered away in, in the great effort to forget our identity, erecting massive defenses to prevent our returning to the home we never left. Yet it is easy to remember it as we only dreamed we were banished from the light, which patiently awaits our awakening from the self-imposed dream of exile. Self-imposed is such a helpful word, word isn't it? So if I'm doing this to myself, oh yeah, that I can do something about. With Again, not on our own though. Let's see, is Lynn here or is she just listening? Lynn, would you like to read paragraph three if you're there? Me. Uh, uh, Lynn Corona. Or... Going okay, once, did... going twice. <laughs> can you hear uh, me? I can hear you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't hear me? I'm a, I'm on a, um, earphones listening to you all. Oh, over, okay. But I don't think I can figure out how to um, do what I need to do next. So oh, okay. I'll well, just that's fine. listen in if you don't mind. Not a problem. Not no Th problem whatsoever. Thank, thank you, Bruce. You betcha. How about Stephen? You're next in my Hollywood dozen here. <laughs> okay, doggy. I had it a minute ago. So here it is. Oh, and I just wanted to say uh, hi to Rosemary. I haven't seen you in a while. Good yeah. to see you. It's good to almost see you, I, I want to say. <laughs> yeah. And, and, while we're on the subject, and while we're on the subject, I, I want to say kudos to Rosemary and, and Maya and Abby and a handful of others that have been posting wonderful stuff on the, the SFACIM Facebook page, which I try to check every day or two or three. Really good stuff. I wonder yeah. what that looks like. Hi, Rosemary. Anyway. Yay. What page, please? Oh, um, let's see. That would be three fifty-seven. Three fifty-seven. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the work. You. In the workbook. 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 Right. Okay. okay. Here we go. Uh, paragraph three: The peace of God is shining in you now, and from your heart extends around the world. It pauses to caress each living thing, and leaves a blessing with it that remains forever and ever. What it gives must be eternal. It removes all thoughts of the ephemeral and valueless. It brings renewal to all tired hearts and lights all vision as it passes by. All of its gifts are given everyone and everyone unites in giving thanks to you who give and you who have received. Um, I have a particular affection for this this lesson um i got to it uh during one of the years 
um, when I was trying to decide whether I was going to keep doing this. And this lesson uh, brought me back to uh, reality, literally. And I said, well, what am I going to, what am I going to do? Go to a Methodist church or maybe, you know, Jehovah Witnesses or these Baha'i. That, 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 that's a, anyway, th this is a, this is a great lesson. Um, the, 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 I thought as I was reading it about not taking it too seriously. Uh, and, and it says here, uh, the peace of God pauses to caress every living thing and leaving a blessing with it that remains forever and ever. And when I read that, I thought, well, even fleas and flies, that's, those are living things. And, you know, I, I did that with a smile, but, uh, it, it does. Uh, there's only one mind, uh, and uh, every living thing is only one son. Uh, so for me, it's a little bit misleading. Uh, but Jesus, uh, I've been finding more and more that uh, that Jesus uh, has to talk to us where we are. And the cool thing is, I'm not sure where I am ever. Uh, so it's it's easy for me to uh, it's easy for me to understand that. And it gets me away from that thing I've been doing so much for so long and trying to figure it out. I mean, I, I heard uh, I heard Watnick yesterday. What, what is it? Uh, from time to timelessness, really, really good, like two CD uh, deal. And one of the things he talks about is we have no idea what time really uh, what time really is uh, because there is no such thing, and there's no time uh, in, in in level one. So. How in the world could you have any idea what that is? And how in the world could you have any? And, and that took me to space. What is space? I mean, you know, we Not made the final that final frontier. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I thought of that too. As a matter of fact. Uh, and this light thing, I love this light thing. Uh, Son of God that likes being separate. Uh, it made all this, made galaxies and black holes just to intri intrigue us. Uh, you know, and this light bulb that's helping me to see my 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 picture, uh, and uh, the the aurora borealis, it's going crazy right now because of some sunspot. Oh, it's so gorgeous! Golly, that keeps us here, doesn't it? At least for the moments I'm looking at it, I don't want to be anywhere else. And you know, so uh, everything I'm thinking today um, has a bit of complication to it, uh, but. The, the, the beauty of this particular lesson is it gives me the kind of hope uh, that I'm always hoping for. Thank you. Thank you. What about mosquitoes? We have, uh, in Louisiana, um, we used to have bats, but we don't have bats in Louisiana anymore because the mosquitoes ate them. <laughs> Those are big mosquitoes. <laughs> I thought you were going to say those are Texas-sized mosquitoes. I, I heard a joke about the, the guy was the guy from Alaska and in Texas were getting together and and the Alaska um, guy was saying yeah everything's bigger in Alaska and he was visiting his friend in Texas and, and then a helicopter flies by and he says all right you've got bigger mosquitoes than we do. So, anyway. Ab Abby, would you like to read the next paragraph? Sure, thanks. <clears throat> the shining in your mind reminds the world of what it has forgotten, and the world restores the memory to you as well. From you, salvation radiates with gifts beyond all measure, given and returned. To you, the giver of the gift, does God himself give thanks. And in his blessing does the light in you shine brighter, adding to the gifts you have to offer to the world. So sentence two there, from you, salvation, true perception, forgiveness, atonement radiates with gifts beyond all measure. I mean, what, what, what greater gift is there than the separation never happened? And the, in his blessing. Every time I see God in the lessons, I, I have to remember that, that uh, Ken had said, 
that this is, uh, he's always referring to the Holy Spirit or our right mind. So does God himself give thanks? Well, when I'm joined in my right mind with the Holy Spirit, I am thankful because there's no pain there. There's no guilt there. There's only peace and stillness and reality. So the light in me shines brighter and it can only happen now. I was thinking when I looked at this lesson half an hour ago, I thought, yeah, well, I'm going to get upset tomorrow and triggered at around 1030. And I want to decide now that that's when I'm going to decide to forgive and join with the whole. You know, this the, the course tells us that it only can teach us what is now, not yesterday, not the future. When I'm upset, I have to go to my right mind now. So it's really um, salvation radiates with gifts. Forgiveness radiates with gifts. I can't do forgiveness any other time except when I'm in a state of upset initially. I'm not going to forgive tomorrow's upset. But I get triggered. So that, to me, that that's the most important um, thing. Salvation radiate from you. Salvation radiates because if I'm not if I'm not joined, if I haven't joined my vision to the Holy Spirit in my right mind, I'm in my wrong mind when I'm upset. That's just how it, that's how this rolls. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I was picturing, you know, everyone looking at their ego's day timer, and it says, you know, 10, 1030, get triggered by X, Y, and Z. <laughs> ah. re, 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 renew the grievance with so-and-so, you know, at, at 1115 or whatever, you know, it's like, well, you know, if we kind of were honest with what, what goes on when we're working with ego, like that'd be filled with all those kind of little little issues and upsets that we've fab fabricated huh? yeah i like the way you put that because it kind of spells it out doesn't it it's like we have to go out of our way to make those upsets but it's each time we're doing it in the present moment we're, we're saying i choose every, every time i choose it has to, to be be a masochist right now <laughs> right. even though i on some level i know that there's a real alternative yeah 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 that's really helpful Thank you. Anyone else in that paragraph? I've been thinking about what Dave Dempsey said about, I think this is what he said. It's what I heard. <laughs> um, talking about the experience of the third step of forgiveness. What does that look like? What does that feel like? And, uh, you know, what does salvation look like when I'm, when I'm extending these, radiating with these gifts? What, how would I even describe that? And, and what, what I heard him say was, read any of the lessons in part two of the workbook. And that pretty well describes the experience. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> we are always like, what's the third step of forgiveness? Well, read any of the lessons in part two of the workbook. And it comes as close as you can, I think, to verbally in sentences describing it, even though it's way beyond that. But yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really good, isn't it? Yeah, it's that, that feeling behind the words, the mellows like Ken talked about, that's when you read that and you let it sink in and you let it really resonate it's like oh yeah wow it's really <laughs> profoundly true what we are and it's you know and it, just an overflowing feeling of, of gratitude when we let ourselves feel it huh? yeah, thanks um david double plane would you like to read the next paragraph number five Paragraph uh, five. Five, uh-huh. The peace of God can never be contained. Who recognizes it within himself must give it. And the means for giving it are in his understanding. If he forgives because he recognized the truth in him, the peace of God is shining in you now and in all living things. The quietness 
and quietness that is acknowledged universally. And what your inward vision looks upon is your perception of the universe. I better read the next one too. Okay. Sit quietly and close your eyes. The light within you is sufficient. It alone has the power to give the gift of sight to you. Exclude the outer world and let your thoughts fly to the peace within. They know the way. For honest thoughts, untainted by the dream, the worldly things outside yourself become the holy messengers of God himself. The, uh, the peace of God can never be contained. They're recognizing it with himself must give it. And when we think about it being within us, shining within us, there's a tendency to think of the body, but that's not where it is. It's the peace of God shining in my mind. And uh, and since we're all joined, it's also shining in the minds of all my brothers as I, uh, for what my inward perception, my inward vision looks upon is your perception of the universe. Let our peace, to, in, in paragraph six, let our peace, let our thoughts fly to the peace within. This, of course, is within the mind. Our thoughts know the way to go there. Our honest thoughts, untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself, become the holy messengers of God himself. So once it shines in our mind, it has to extend outside to become a holy messenger of God himself. We have to keep in mind that when it says within you, it's always within our mind. It's a tendency sometimes to think of it being within our body, but that's not where it is. Yeah, that's really helpful, isn't it? Because if the course is true, then it's always and only about the mind, but that's all there is. <laughs> and because our minds are so powerful and we think we've made up a divided mind, um even that you know that those crazy thoughts are quarantined to that divided mind and have never left their source right so so there's there's really the world that we think is doing stuff to us is really just showing us what we thought we did to ourselves but didn't happen right yeah. that uh, paragraph six lesson sentence six uh or no, sentence five, let your thoughts fly to the peace within, wherever they've been before, but they have to fly to the peace within. Where have they been before? In order to have to try to let them fly to the peace within. They must be run, run around there with ego perception and judgment and all that stuff. So that has to be laid aside so that our thoughts can fly to the peace with them. There's a lot of fluttering going around in here. <laughs> it's, it's a fluttering of a journey without distance, right? It, it takes no time. There's no space and no time, as we were talking about earlier. Let them so, fly to the peace with them, yeah. yeah. I think and, of it as sort of like two, two magnets that have a strong pull and just, you know, a split <laughs> second later. But, but really, there, it takes no time because how can anything that's never been divided be separate? So the flying is really just, I think, a helpful metaphor for us that it, it, it was two magnets easily, you know? easily. And, and those two magnets are an interesting illustration because, you know, if you put them one way, they resist mm -hmm. from the other way they join. Yep. Yep. So that's what we're really doing is moving them from resistance to joining. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When they're all, lined the same way they just go whoop. <laughs> but once we start resisting it's like okay i'm gonna fight do what it says in uh chapter 30 you know where it says do not fight yourself well okay that's any kind of polarization would have to be fighting ourselves right 
whenever we make a big deal about something in the world, we're really making a big deal about uh, a split in our mind. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else on five or six? I've got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Maybe, maybe I'll come back to some of these. <laughs> yeah. Like, so uh, like, I don't know, a few weeks back, Stephen was pointing out my mind can only hold what I think with God. I mean, that's the only th real thoughts, thoughts period that are happening. Everything else is just, what do you call them? Dreaming, <laughs> dreaming of worldly things. I mean, it was, it's interesting when he talks about thoughts. It's like, at what level of the thought is, is he talking about? And then what's really going on? My mind can only think really what I think with God. Everything else is just flutter. <laughs> yeah. Goose down. Stephen. Yeah, these, uh, these few sentences which have been, uh, we talked about these uh, in the men's class, and this is the men's class, and it's, it's really got me. Uh, it's uh, this is thoughts. Thoughts thoughts are a weaving, changing pattern that never rests and is never still. It shifts unceasingly across the mirror of your mind, and the reflections of heaven last but a moment and grow dim as darkness blots them out. Where there was light, darkness removes it in an instant, and alternating patterns of light and darkness sweep constantly across your mind. What this says to me is that because of because of what we seem to have done and how that works and the, and the brilliance of the Son of God that likes to be separate, which we're calling ego, uh, the dark the dark thoughts seem to be winning, quote unquote, just by what this says. Um, we know that that the way to uh, uh, the way to awaken is to bring the bring the uh, the light to the darkness or the darkness anyway <laughs> one of those get, yeah, we, we know that light is, is 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 stronger but this says that in this world the thoughts seem to be blotting out the light mm -hmm. what you just read who wrote that uh, that's in the equality of miracles chapter 14 oh you mean just jesus wrote it Yes, well, that oh, guy. That guy. <laughs> well, actually, he didn't write it. He just gave, as I understand it, um, and, and this he, it it came through Helen, and Helen wrote it down, so that that process of interdictation is is uh, is is not it seems to be defined by jesus and i've said it hundreds of times jesus said this jesus wrote this but actually those words came through and and she wrote that she wrote that down so she was a part of that process but uh you know that's that's up for huge discussion you know thank you i, I want to address your 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 comment a moment ago Stephen, and with with something that uh I find helpful, and, and that's in the course where it says, the ego's thought system may be foolproof, but it's not God-proof. <laughs> I, I find that really, really helpful, because like, no matter how far we've pulled the wool over our own eyes, you know, the, the light's still there, you know, I mean, we can, we can wear a pretty opaque hoodie over <laughs> our face, but, but once we realize, wait a minute, it's, it's, you know, dazzling sunshine out there or above the clouds if we're, you know, on a cloudy day, but there's the sun still there, metaphorically, and we just are choosing to, to you know, blot it out with our thumb or a cloud or a building or something. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it, it reminds me, I, excuse the interruption. Go oh, ahead, go, go, I was done. Yeah, thanks. It reminds me, it's not ego's thought system. It's son of God, the split mind of son of God's thought system that was put through ego right. to keep us more confused about what we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it gives us, it gives, it gives a, a you know, sin, guilt, and fear in the secret dream. Uh, and then coming into the world, ego seemed to have been made, but it's very clear in, in the manual for teachers uh, that uh, ego is nothing in a form that seems like something. Mm -hmm. And that form that seems like something 
was made by son of God that likes to be separate. Right. Yeah, I, I like to think of it, like, since I have an electrical engineering background, like a simple two position switch, you know, and you've got yeah. voltage that can either flow into the, the light bulb that is the Holy Spirit or this, this burned out bulb that's the ego. <laughs> and it's the, the burnout bulb, there's really no, nothing going on there. You know, there's, there's really no current flowing. So it's, it's, it's an idle thought. It's, there's, there's nothing happening because our minds are so powerful. We can imagine that there's current flowing there. And we made up a whole universe that simulates the idea of what if something happened that in response to the idea of separation. So yeah, like you were saying, you know, it's, it's really the son of God choosing the dim bulb thought system. <laughs> the yeah, and please, system. please excuse me that, uh, you know, like it, it, when I was listening to myself just now, I was I'm thinking, it, it sounds like I'm teaching, but I'm not. This is just things that, that, that seem to be going around in my head that I'm saying that I, I hope it's understood, but I hope it's also as accurate as possible. But I really, in truth, don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm combining what I heard from Wabnick with the, with the course from what I learned in all the classes I've been to. Uh, and, and more than that, from what, I, from what I've learned by being in the right mind in those holy instants for those moments. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just saying stuff. Thank you for listening. It's it's good stuff, though. We we, <laughs> I think I think we can all relate because you know when when we realize that that you know the Holy Spirit really is just trying to tell us that nothing happened when we're choosing the ego thought system. Um, I think I think that's really helpful information. I, and I love how um, Ken so many times says in different ways. It's like the world isn't the problem and the ego isn't the problem, which I think is kind of getting to what you're talking about. It's the Son of God, the decision making principle that believes that something happened and it believes that it can still choose the ego that's the problem and it actually wants to keep choosing it if there is such a problem thing as a problem that would be it <laughs> yeah ken's, an, ken's analogy for similar to trying to send the voltage to a, a dead light bulb is you're at the track the horses take off one of the horses die right at the gate and you go run into bed on that horse <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> bed on the dead horse <laughs> yeah. yep all or nothing i'm on uh <laughs> well i don't have a name for the horse but i'm sure there's plenty of good ones for the dead horse <laughs> we can all come up with plenty of good names for the dead horse i'm sure <laughs> Anyway, okay. Well, we uh, could all put our name on the horse. Yeah, yeah well, that's true. I'm yeah. betting on Tim. I'm betting on Stephen. Yeah. I, my, my pet name is Bruce, Bruce of Fiction. That might be my dead horse. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's see. Uh, Betsy, would you like to read uh, paragraph seven? Yes, thanks. Thank you. These thoughts you think with him, they recognize their home and they point surely to their source where God the Father and the Son are one. God's peace is shining on them, but they must remain with you as well, for they were born within your mind as yours was born in God's. They lead you back to peace from where they came, but to remind you how you must return. I really like this lesson, uh, as, especially after my day today. Um, Tim had asked me if I had been blaspheming today, and I said, oh, no. And of course, I all day, all day, in fact, in, in fact, all day. And and I was I was kind of looking at some of my notes from today, and, and I just felt so crazy with fear. And, and this whole lesson is like a little lullaby to just, you know, calm all of those worries and fears down and and say you know those those thoughts they're they're still here with me and and they're going to lead me back to where i need to go so, thanks thank you yeah as you're saying that i was thinking the same thing it's like you know i had some you know my my usual assortment of crazy thoughts today and, and i think just just within a few minutes to just say okay holy spirit help, help me share something that's helpful in the the class tonight you know and and including myself in that and it's like yeah a few seconds into it it's like 
oh, this is fun. This is this is the state of mind I enjoy being in. Why don't I do this more often? And I, you know, I it wasn't like I had a horrible day, but it was just like, you know, in, in retrospect, it's like, oh yeah, I, I'm really sure changing myself by not doing this more and more throughout the day, which is kind of like the point of the of the, the lessons, you know, the, where they increase the amount of time and 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 I think we're going to come to that naturally one way or another sooner or later because we'll you know be, be inevitably faced with the abysmal track record of the ego and just seeing in an honesty how often that crazy thought system of separation makes us miserable and how often when we just drop it it's like oh man i feel so good when i stop banging my head against ego's wall <laughs> yeah so yeah anyway i was also thinking about the the emphasis on relationships again and and how there's no difference between self and other in the course in the sense that one, when we recognize that it extends to everyone where, you know, several places in this lesson, it's like, we have no idea how, where that goes because we don't really grok mind. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice concept, but you know, we've, we've gotten down so far into the, the rabbit hole dream that the idea is like, wow, every, every mind in the universe is connected and every thought i think with holy spirit is helping to undo that for everyone because <laughs> everyone is in my mind and everyone can say that right yeah lisa you're, you're on mute <laughs> yeah. um and that goes for everyone for all living creatures too it's not yeah. just other people quote unquote it's so when i'm in my right mind when i'm having those holy instants i i feel a sense of everything is in my mind the whole thing all of you including putin and trump and even creatures that i don't like like ants and rats and um it's all part of it. And if you go beyond the forms, then it is just one beautiful, amazing creation, thought of God. Yeah. So so your ants and your rats in your mind are, is equally deserving of, of, of kindness as your the turntable yes. in your hi-fi system? Yes, when I'm in okay. when I'm in my right mind, there's no there aren't differences, right? It's all part of that one right. Yeah. No, my hi fi system is definitely a little higher, but yeah. <laughs> because it's high fi, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to read the next paragraph? Well, I'm just curious. Oh. Has anybody had not ever heard the word grok G R O K? I've heard it. Has everyone read Strange in a Strange Land? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or seen the movie. Or, or... a long time. Was there, a, there was, was a movie? movie? I didn't know there was a movie. David oh. Bowie was the stranger. Oh, I'll have to check that oh, out. Oh, man. I'm going to have to check that out because I loved that book. Yeah. I never yeah. saw it. But I, yeah. Oh, okay. And she, and Robert was a she, by the way. She was she didn't want to write under her own name because she figured sci-fi and those really? oh, would not wow. sell, but it was a woman. Oh, interesting. That that also happened in uh, a friend of mine, uh, John Martineau, penned a book under under a different name, a woman's name. For, for under a woman's name. Okay. Uh, for sacred geometry. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, so anyway, because women which, know better about that stuff. They don't know about <laughs> sci-fi, but they <laughs> anyway. A small world of women. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Do you want to read the next paragraph? Sure. Okay. Okay. So uh, I guess he's saying they, they meaning those thoughts, mm -hmm. these thoughts. Okay. They heed your father's voice when you refuse to listen. And they urge you gently to accept his word for what you are instead of fantasies and shadows. They remind you that you are the co-creator of all things that live. For as the peace of God is shining in you, it must shine on them. Yeah, because it's, again, it's all 
one thing. It's, there is nothing else. There, it, it's just, okay. I think I made that point before. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's understanding anything I'm saying, but I feel like it makes perfect. It just, it fits. When I'm in that place, that's what I experience. I can be sitting out on my deck and listening to the birds and, you know, all the creatures and the wind rushing through the trees. And it's just all oh, one beautiful thing. It's beyond what the form is. It's it's only evoking what's the mellows behind it. Yeah. I was seeing Disney animation there. While you were saying <laughs> that's good too. The birds singing. No, that's what I mean. It feels that's what I mean. It's just yeah, so yeah. mellifluous. <laughs> And yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah. and yeah. Mozart, piano concertos, and <laughs> all of that stuff. It's just all evoking what's beyond yeah, yeah. that form. And we use words to try to describe that, huh? I can't. Yeah, I know, I'm I doing a horrible job. I'm it's, sorry. Well, we're all pathetic at that, but just, but... just two words Colorado Springs. <laughs> Good plug. I'll give you your 20 later. <laughs> this is pr promoting the next uh, uh, symposium. The, 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 okay. Good. Symposium. Oh. Or, or, what, what are you calling it these days? Retreat. Retreat. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've heard these things called so many different names. Yeah. Right. I'm okay. coming. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Uh, any, any other thoughts on that, Lisa? Well, I don't know if I can say anything else because I think I said it all. You did. You did. <laughs> as best I could. Well, does uh, your uh, does your reverie include the homeless? There's a lot of homeless in Portland. I mean, there is no one that it excludes. Because, we're all, because we're all homeless. We all are homeless. <laughs> well, we think we are. And did you notice my name? Strangers in a strange I land. I changed it. I changed it. Why? Because that's what my mom and my and my sister would call me. Do so, we need to start calling you that now? Yeah, because I want to feel like I'm part of a family. <laughs> and that's what it feels like. And now that I don't have any. <laughs> you retrain all please, of us. Oh my please, God. please, please, please. It took us please, five years to please. spell it right and say it right. Oh, and now. <laughs> I think this will ease that. I think it'll be easier. It will be an ease to say. I was going to say the same thing. It'll be an ease oh to say leaves. <laughs> the bees knees. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> back at the ranch. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, that first sentence in paragraph eight they heed your father's voice when you refuse to listen. That just means to me, it's like even when someone seems to be calling for love in my right mind, if I'm listening to Holy Spirit and looking with Holy Spirit's eyes, I can see that's a call for love and it's really no different than an expression of love in truth because the calls for love that seem to be devoid of love really, uh, there's there's no violation of love there's no way that love can be negated right so so if other people <laughs> air quotes seem, seem to be um not heeding the voice or and or myself when i seem to be refusing to listen um th th we're all still heeding that that voice in truth because we never left we're dreaming of exile right go, go ahead lise Good job. <laughs> I, some things I can learn. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that if we're all one mind, then those calls for love that seemingly come from others, they're, they're really our calls too. How could it be I otherwise? Mean, it's yes, all, yes, yes. It's all the same. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank one big celebrity hot tub. Right. Are we thinking, you know, like, the, the 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 image that works for me is angels are flying back to the source and they're gently how does he put it 
they're gently bringing the angels are gently bringing me back with them those are the thoughts the angels are thoughts the thoughts are the angels mm -hmm. are the mighty companions yeah. we haven't left each other we haven't abandoned god either and we're all in the ultimate good graces yeah guilt's not justified Vicky's had this whimsical smile the whole class. And I'm just and, and she's next Vicky, on my well, list good. to read. <laughs> Are you ready, Vicky? Whimsical. Interesting whimsical. description. You want me to read? Sure. Okay. Number nine, right? Uh-huh. Okay. We practice coming near to the light in us today. We take our wandering thoughts and gently bring them back to where they fall in line with all the thoughts we share with God. We will not let them stray. We let the light within our minds direct them to come home. We have betrayed them, ordering that they depart from us. But now we call them back and wash them clean of strange desires and disordered wishes. We restore to them the holiness of their inheritance. Now I'm kind of counting on, um, on God to restore their holiness. It sounds like a pretty big job for me personally. Um, Yeah, I think this lesson is uh, really powerful in um, the peace that it is sharing with us and the light. And I wondered right away at the beginning of the lesson, the peace of God is shining in me now. I thought the son of God is shining in me now. Wherever peace and light are, feels like that's a description of the sun in the mind of God. Yes. I, I appreciate the thought system that we're learning in this course because um, I, never, I never knew how God thought differently than I did before, um, before studying forgiveness and, and the course. I mean, I, I can identify sun, light, and peace ideas that belong with God, that we share with God. And um, those were quite sketchy before the, um, the coming of the Course in my life. And I appreciate that. <laughs> That yes, I can tell yes. that I can tell the I can tell the nothingness thoughts like you can identify them now. I didn't. I wasn't able to do that before. Mm -hmm. Any of that clear? Yeah, yeah. And as you were saying that you know the the tough job of restoring them to holiness, I was thinking, yeah, that's that's a, that's a pretty heavy heavy task. But it occurred to me is that maybe all we're really doing is just taking that what seemed to be super massive heavy lead foil lined light blocking curtains but they're really just these little gossamer wispy things from the holy spirit's perspective you know but a veil it's just a, yes like the flimsiest of veils that's but because our minds are so powerful we can imagine this this infinitesimal thing blocking all the light or almost all the light because there's always you know a little crack that lets the light in <laughs> right but we we don't really do all we do is is kind of, I, I love the the metaphors of like a, a transistor takes a little tiny signal and amplifies it into a much much bigger signal or like a, you have a big earth mover and you've got the hydraulics in it where the, it could be a, you know a three-year-old sitting there moving levers and uh you know <laughs> they they can move a whole mountain just by pushing levers and pedals and stuff that that or a tiny fraction of the amount of force that's exerted on the, the dirt, right? And the stone. But but the Holy Spirit, you know, does the heavy lifting because there's 
really nothing heavy to lift in truth. <laughs> but where we think we're at, there's there's plenty of heavy lifting going on. But I think from the other side, you know, we look back and see, oh, wow. Well, no wonder Holy Spirit was like the Maytag repairman just sitting there, you know, waiting for us to call and and it, available instantly to fix what never went wrong. And I was like, oh, that's to help with the disappearance. Yeah. The disappearance of what never happened. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if I got this from Ken, but he, he like one of the ways to look at wandering thoughts are all the images I have of a, a brother separate from me and the way I justify that. So we take our wandering thoughts about our brothers and we gently bring them back to where they fall in line with all the thoughts that we share with God that our brothers aren't separate from us. We stop trying to justify the separation and lay down our judgments. And then uh, we will not let them stray, meaning our, our ideas wander off about our brothers. And then we let the light within our minds direct them to come home. We're, we're we're really talking to ourselves to realize our brothers are still moving towards this experience of home together. They're not keeping me from it. They're not separate from me. And then, and we have betrayed them. We have betrayed our brothers, ordering that they depart from us now. But we, now we call them back. And watch this image we have of our brothers clean of strange desires, special love, special hate, disordered wishes. I don't know what Ken said about it, but it sounds like something he would say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all right on. Yeah. It's it's, it's the, those thoughts in our mind that are represented by all the, the people that we pe people our mental world with. It seems to be a physical world. Huh? Yep. And bringing them back is saying, oh, you're the same as me. And therefore, the innocence has never been compromised because of that sameness is just a reflection of the oneness, which means separation couldn't happen because it's impossible and perfect oneness. And then and then that last sense, we restore to them, our brothers, the holiness of their inheritance. Mm -hmm. All those crazy thoughts we had about them, that they weren't holy, that they did not have a sacred inheritance. Yeah. We restore to them in our own awareness their holiness seems like a lot of a lot of times the way we we initiate that restoration is by noticing the discomfort of either the projection and seeing that you know we're upset uh, about what some someone else is is doing or not doing and then we realize it's like well that's really my projection <laughs> and they may or may not even be aware of what they <laughs> Are doing or not doing but it's my projection that makes the upset and if i can realize oh that's an interpretation that i'm choosing to see differences as real and and say you know sameness is not happening and if i can see that that has had no effect then they're called back automatically they fly fly back <laughs> instantly quicker than any any magnets yeah. Anything else on that paragraph or what we've read so far? Betsy. So I'm not really sure in in this paragraph, um, he uses that word we and and I don't know that I'm guessing it's it's the one mind and Holy Spirit or Jesus, but I also look at it as we as in we in this zoom session or or we and everybody else on the planet and and the the mosquitoes and and everything that you know um i find it helpful to kind of look at this as we in that when when the my part of the mind is is flailing about and having trouble that I can count on my brothers to 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 take over some of that burden, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not really sure that that's really what he means here, um, but you know that. But it's that we're all trying to get there in our own way um, as as a one mind. 
Um, yeah, as you're saying, I was thinking, well, the, the assigning the responsibility, um, I think the course would probably just say something like, you know, we, we just have to see everyone as our savior and they don't have to do anything, but they show us what's in our mind. And so they're already fulfilling that function. And so, so it is a joint effort. Um, I also like how, how Ken Wapnick always reminds us is like when everyone you know, talks about being in a holy relationship, I try to remember, or, or an unholy relationship, it's really the only holy relationship there is, is my decision-making mind with the Holy Spirit. Kind of like that position, a two position switch again. If I'm, if I'm in a holy relationship, all the only thing it can ever really be is that circuitry is, is wired to the Holy Spirit thought system in that moment. And when I'm in an unholy relationship, it may seem, seem to be with some other person or something or some situation, but it's really just that circuitry, so to speak, being wired to the, the dead horse, the burned out bulb, <laughs> the thought system that's never going to get out the starting gate that, that, uh, that thinks that separation happened. And those are the, the wandering thoughts that, that never went anywhere because they're idle. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting um, when, I, when I, I sort of clue into what Betsy was talking about. He, the whole first eight paragraphs were pretty much addressed to you, meaning mm -hmm. me. And then suddenly he breaks into the we thing. Oh, yeah. Like there's a transition between eight and nine where it was all directed at us, what we should seem to do individually. And then when we do that, when we sit quietly, we close our eyes, you know, we ask for, for peace. We, we ask for an experience. We, that last sentence in paragraph eight, as the peace of God is shining in you, I begin to realize it's shining on all my brothers. And then we, we become a we. It's not like I'm doing this, it's we're doing this. It's a huge shift and it seems subtle and he does it all the time in a lot of lessons where he goes from you to we. But I just thought, well, that's the transition point. That's pretty cool. Huh? I like that. <laughs> I didn't see it until Betsy said it. I was like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> it's, all, it's almost like we suddenly realize, oh, I've been choosing with Holy Spirit and now I'm just, con you know, acknowledging that. Yeah, that it's it's that partnership yeah Stephen. uh yeah when when uh we we were reading this uh i i i thought oh this is like that and then i thought this is like that and then y'all all said what you said and i really think it's like this 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 paragraph seems to be a summary if you if i would combine agreement to join that section with closing the gap that section if I would combine those two sections, it kind of seems to explain what this paragraph says. Thing is, and the and the wonderment of it is, you really don't have to. You don't you really don't have to read those sections. You just have to read this paragraph a few times, <laughs> which makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I suppose all all we'd really have to do is read one paragraph completely with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> or one sentence in the whole book. And we wouldn't need the rest of the book. You know, God is, and then we cease to speak, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Let's see. In, any other comments? And thank you for that that insight, Tim, on the 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 uh, per, first person suddenly shifting to the the, the plural. Uh, Betsy did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's her fault. I blame her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the it's the the all inclusive we that is the only way Holy Spirit works because he he doesn't leave anyone out. And, yeah. Let's see. Um, Rosemary, are you are you available to to read with or without video? If you're still if you're still listening. Hi. Yes. Um, Would you like to read the pa the paragraph ten last the last paragraph? Yeah, I haven't um, haven't been following them that the book. Um, but what what page was it again? Oh, uh, this would be on page uh, three fifty eight, paragraph ten. Okay. Uh huh. In the workbook. <clears throat> three fifty eight. 
in the in the text or the the, wor the workbook. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's a, no problem. Lesson one eighty eight, uh, page three fifty eight. Yeah, the original Ur text version in paragraph 10 said, thus is, is Rosemary's mind restored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Thus are our minds restored with them. And we acknowledge that the peace of God still shines in us and from us to all living things that share our life. We will forgive them all, absolving all the world from what we thought it did to us. For it is we who make the world as we would have it. Now we choose that it be innocent, devoid of sin, and open to salvation. And we lay our saving blessing on it as we say, The peace of God is shining in me now. Let all things shine upon me in that peace. And let me bless them with the light in me. Yeah, that's uh that's that's it. That that's all of it. It's until we can see the uh the innocence in everybody and everything. I mean, even ants and <laughs> snakes and all the, you know, the, everything is innocent and it just, it just, it just gets rid of the fear, you know, because if we're working with the Holy Spirit and that's, that's our goal is to see peace and innocence everywhere. It's, it's just, oh, can I say, I mean, it's just, I, I I'm finding that more and more with people and you know, it's just, I, I see the heart of gold in, in people more than I ever did before. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that heart of gold is really more and more obvious when we are willing yeah. to suspend the the resistance even just a little bit more each time, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neil Young's song. But he never found it in that song, did he? <laughs> I love that song. I oh, know, it's great. Song. Uh, <laughs> love Neil Young. Yeah. But, but we're in the seek and, and then find curriculum rather than the seek, but do not find curriculum. So, so we, we got a, 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 a happy outcome, a happy inevitability. Yeah, thank you. David, David. I like that uh, sentence that says, as we who make the world as we would have it. So when we look out on the world, it just is what it is, but we make of it what we want it to be. If we think it's coming back to attack us, it's because we're attacking it. If we're extending it peace, it's because Peace comes back. We make the world as we would have it. I like that. Pretty powerful minds we have, huh? And it's all that little, all because of that little two position switch in any given moment. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's where one of the places where he says, basically paraphrasing. The reason we have to save the world is we were the ones that were condemning it. Mm -hmm. right. We just have to stop condemning it. <laughs> the not, the big not no. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Yeah, when you think about we've been condemning a dream, then that couldn't have had too big an impact on reality. Yeah. I like rats, though. I think they're cute. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Jansen is them. Just a quick, uh, uh, in listening to everything tonight, uh, it's been very helpful to me. I, I almost feel like, you know, we always talk about words are twice removed from reality. But tonight, I felt like words have just been once removed from reality. It seems like we're talking about being... Um, 
in the right mind and um just the pictures people and and bruce when you first talked about which has helped me because i'm wondering about everybody else in the world when they're going to get on ship you know and uh when i'm on the ship and seeing them that way i'm actually reaching out in my mind to what's in their mind and so that's that's uh that's uh, going to be an e easy one for me to forgive now because I've kind of can understand how that works. It's not, uh, it, it's certainly not uh, making something real and forgiving it, you know, uh, but it's, it's realizing it, it's really helpful to realize that um, getting into that um, right mind or the oneness um in the, in the spirit is uh, really the most, uh, the way we <laughs> universally will bring that, collectively will bring that around. And you can, you can still be in, uh, act, you know, fight global warming and, and try to keep people from uh, hurting each other on a, in a time and space uh, when you can but that's that's just it's nice to be able to step back and look at things that are uh, either very very pleasant or very very unpleasant I kind of see them as the same in, in that sense once you step back from it thanks as you're saying that i was also thinking about the the deficiencies i think that i see in someone else not only are they not there but the deficiency in me that thinks it's projecting onto someone else isn't there either. And, and I, I find it really helpful when I remember uh, to, to think I'm the only one that seems to be playing hooky. Everyone else is already home, healed, whole, celebrating, parting on in eternity. And I'm the only one that's dreaming of exile that needs to wake up. And and that everyone's already there completely healed, whole, unaffected by my dream. I don't often remember that, if we're, but I think I'm remembering it a little more than I used to. <laughs> and that, that, that helps. Yeah. Has anybody seen the series Beef, B-E-E-F, on Netflix? It's really... It, it was it was yes. I, oh, did excellent you see? excellent oh yeah yeah so that it starts with road rage and it just escalates i mean it's bad enough they're giving each other the finger and they're trying to track each other down and then it affects their families and then it affects their all their relationships and it's just like there's no way this is going to transcend and yet last night's episode it was so brilliant <laughs> in the way they they all went what they had to do <laughs> to go right-minded. I won't give any of it away, but it's it's amazing. You just thought they're going to die hating each other. How could they not? <laughs> yeah, beef. And it's just a little half-hour episodes about them yeah. on Netflix. Hmm. Critics love it. I mean, they're, they can't stop saying enough good stuff about it. Hmm. But yeah, check it out if you're inclined for that kind of <laughs> drama at all. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. And it's got Rosemary's seal of approval. Too. <laughs> yeah. The golden thumb <laughs> has been raised. <laughs> All right. Well, I did I did make a few notes going through Ken's comments about uh, Lesson 188. Since we have a few few minutes, I thought I'd read some of those um, and just, just go back real quickly. We still have plenty of time to read the, tomorrow's lesson here. Um, yeah. This is I'll just this is written in relation to paragraph two. I think I might have already read this, but some of these bear repeating. As I, I know I need the repetition. Um, the light is in our minds, yet we have wandered away in a great effort to forget our identity, erecting massive defenses to prevent our returning home we never to the home we never left. Yet it is easy to remember it it the, that home, capital H. We only as we only dreamed we were banished from the light, which patiently awaits our awakening from. The self-imposed dream of exile. Stop me anytime if you have a comment. <laughs> um, here's here's this comment on uh, part of paragraph three. Um, th th we're talking about uh, you know the, uh, light and life and all all life, 
as we know, vision has nothing to do with physically seeing light, such as auras, but with extending the light of truth when we accept the Holy Spirit as our teacher. And then uh, from the previous paragraph, I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, we repeatedly see Jesus' emphasis on our need to recognize that both the problem and solution are in our minds. In fact, there is nothing but our minds where perception starts, light or darkness, and where it ends, love or fear. Everything is projection. And I, I underlined thing. <laughs> Every specific thing has to be some kind of projection. Right? Uh, let's see. Giving and receiving are one. Uh, there's, you know, we could talk for hours on that. Um, oh, th this is one he quotes from chapter 18 that I that I think really kind of fits this uh, workbook lesson very nicely. Uh, and I just love the way this is phrased. You and your brother are coming home together after a long and meaningless journey that you undertook apart and that led nowhere. Yeah. So it's okay <laughs> that we didn't get anywhere with our dreams <laughs> because that just means we never left, right? Yeah. Um, here's a, a no. long and meaningless journey that took us nowhere. <laughs> that isn't schizophrenia. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, really, really, isn't it? Isn't that? I mean, it's. I love how Ken says, you know, it's not evil, sinful, or wicked what we thought we did. It's just silly, you know. And our our minds are really powerful. Yep. And the total effect we've had on perfect oneness is zero zip zilch nada. And that makes forgiveness fully authorized, justified, and doable. But if we had pulled off something, if we had been able to even do a smidgen of the impossible dream, then we'd be sunk. But because it never happened, we're good to go. <laughs> Here's another one. Thoughts of specialness and judgment are projections of the ego's thought system. The recognition that we share one interest for Everyone, without exception, is part of the, part of Christ. Um, I mean, I've got so many things underlined here. I'm just hitting a few that I doubly underlined. Uh, oh, here, here was the thought, all things that live. Um, all things that live, in quotes, this is from paragraph eight, refers to the universe of spirit. Yeah, not, not fleas and flies and gophers and cats and <laughs> bats and... <laughs> What are you saying, Tim? I saw your mouth moving. Rats. Rats. <laughs> Ratatouille. Anyone? Okay, let's see. Uh, now jumping over to paragraph 10, um, where it says, we will forgive them all, absolving all the world from what we thought it did to us. Thought emphasized. So Ken says, Thus, Jesus teaches me to forgive my brothers for what they have not done. And I know Gary Renard's uh, teachers often emphasize that phrase. You know, the only way forgiveness works is you forgive people for what they haven't done in truth, because there's no one out there and <laughs> they couldn't do anything to what we really are. And so, you know, therefore, thus, once again, the foundation for true forgiveness rests secure because there's nothing to forgive in truth. The world did nothing to me for I made it vicious and victimizing. Thus, I am the one to absolve it. I can hear a Harry Potter, um, which, uh, what's what they call it, cast or the twang. <laughs> I forget the, I, I'm not Harry Potter a junkie, so I don't know the joke. Bills. Spells, thank you. Yes, yes. Well, we'll dispel the spell of, of, of what never happened, right? Thank you. Okay, and then here's one last one before we read the, the closing. Uh, Ken says, key to our practice is realizing that everyone is part of the sonship. We need watch our minds, judgments, and special attachments, understanding they come from a decision, albeit repressed, to believe the ego's darkness is reality and Christ's light is an illusion. We use the day's experiences to discern the mind's decision, recognizing that the mistaken choice made us unhappy, while happiness comes from asking Jesus' help to correct the error. So simple, huh? Okay. So um, 
Abby, would you like to read lesson 269 as our closing? As lesson? a closing, of course. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Here we go. <clears throat> My sight goes forth to look upon Christ's face. I ask your blessing on my sight today. It is the means which you have chosen to become the way to show me my mistakes and look beyond them. It has given me to find a new perception through the guide you gave to me and through his lessons to surpass perception and return to truth. I ask for the illusion which transcends all those I made. Forgiveness. Today I choose to see a world forgiven in which everyone shows me the face of Christ and teaches me that what I look upon belongs to me, that nothing is except your Holy Son. Today, our sight is blessed indeed. We share one vision as we look upon the face of him whose self is ours. We are one because of him who is the Son of God, of him who is our own identity. Thank you. Let's get quiet for a few moments. That's okay. Okay, let's all uh, look at everyone and see Christ's face, the ones we seem to be physically with and those that we even think about. Yeah. Very good. Well done. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Thank Thanks, you. Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, everyone. 829, you nailed it. Me. <laughs> thank you so much. This is really yeah, good. thanks, Bruce. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I think it's what thanks we all everybody. needed, right? <laughs> I did. I needed it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you much. Thank you. And it all started with Betsy blaspheming too. And now look what <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank God for the blasphemers. <laughs> And, and if you if you need something to, to to further this, I looked up. There's 926 instances of now, and 738 instances of light. Just those two alone we could have spent a few weeks on, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just light and now. Bask yeah. bask in the light right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Is well, is basking ever in the in the book any place? Basking, bask, because that's what we kind of. I don't think the Pyrenees are even in there, but let me. It's, it's, no, it's, no it's, just no bask either. It's no basking. basking. No basking. Okay. No blaspheming. Only basking. <laughs> <laughs> We're just coming up with some one-liners for the book. Yeah. No blast furnaces either. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> the arc of golden light is in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. we just we just get the gentle the gentle illumination, not the the roasty toasty stuff. All right, good night, you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Peaceful evening, Vicky. Yeah. Bye. Thanks.